I lived in Suffolk and my mother gave me a copy, an early edition of Margaret Catchpole in my teens. And then when I eventually met Stephen, he read it and got completely hooked on it too. And when he received a commission for a Suffolk opera for a Suffolk Music Society, he decided that Margaret Catchpole was the obvious answer and found the perfect librettist in Ronald Fletcher, who was a local historian and already had written a book about Richard Cobbold, who wrote the Margaret Catchpole story. It was eventually performed in Suffolk twice at different local festivals. And now it's received the ideal situation being performed at Snape on the very marshes that Stephen loved walking on. And, and the opinion is that he actually captured the atmosphere of those marshes in the opera. Although based on a real story of a lady who lived at the end of the 18th century, is uh, really a fable by Richard Cobbold. It tells the story of Margaret, a poor woman who's brought up a, as a labourer, really, on a farm, who gets to be in the employment of a fancy family in Ipswich, the Cobbolds. She works there happily, but eventually she, she wants to follow her love. She steals a horse. She goes to London and she's caught and sentenced to death. Her sentence is commuted, and the Cobbold family really helped with that by putting in a good word for her. Um, but she escapes from prison. And of course, this is another capital offence. So she's going to the shore to meet her beloved Will. He gets shot, she's captured again, and transported to Australia. And it's there that she does find true happiness eventually on the banks of the Hawkesbury River. So it's a tale of somebody who comes from nothing gives a lot away by uh, committing crimes, but eventually finds happiness. Margaret Catchpole was quite special because being Australian, stories about convicts and it's a big part of our history and also my one of my first singing teachers actually originated the role of Margaret Catchpole so it was quite special to remember her in that way. It, I found it difficult to approach as she can seem naive in the way that she's constantly following Will Lord around even though he's doing these horrible things to her. But I think in the way the music is written, I understood it better as we rehearsed it more. Um, the way he can be quite persuasive and we've all wanted people or things that we can't have. So I kind of then identified with that a bit more. Um, vocally, it's, it's a big thing, it's substantial and she's on stage a lot of the time. Um, but it's very rewarding. You get to do a lot of different emotions, go through a lot of scenarios and uh, engage with a lot of different characters. So I found it very rewarding to sing. So I was introduced to the music of Stephen Dodgson when I was a, a teenager. 
and it stuck with me. Um, that name has a hook. It, it tells me that that music was full of humour, rhythmic vitality and memorable. So that's, that stayed with me. So I'm, I'm really delighted to be able to come and uh, sing his opera. Uh, the role I have is the judge. There's only 10, mi 10 minutes of music, but it's a uh, it's very memorable moment in the piece, full of sort of pomposity. It's clear that there's a man of, um, of distinction and that he has the, um, has the task of passing judgment on Margaret who's not done a terrible thing, let's face it, she's only stolen a horse, but his, uh, his sentence is, you've got to go to the gallows. Um, so we have that music that's very pompous, and then it becomes particularly stark at the end, and the accompaniment behind is, is fantastic. It's got this pulse and this, this urgency, um, which just focuses the terrible tension that Margaret's in the middle of. So um, it's... It's great music, um, the colours in the orchestra and what he gives the singers to do are wonderful and uh, inspiring, actually. It is my solemn duty then to pass sentence upon you, which is that you be taken from the place where you now stand. Back to the place from which you came, and then to the place of execution, and there to be hanged by the neck until you be dead. And may God have mercy on your soul. One of the things I find so powerful about this opera is the way it addresses full-on human frailty. And of course, I'm thinking of a character, Will Lord, the smuggler with whom Margaret Catchpole is so obsessively in love. Will Lord tries to do the right thing. He goes and joins the Navy, but he's, I think he's brought down by the relentlessly odious Nick Luff. But there's this wonderful moment when Will Lord comes out of prison and he's suddenly comes across Margaret, where he has this short rhapsody where he, he extols her virtues and says, Margaret, never changing, Margaret. And it's only a moment. I think that's what's so powerful about the opera, the way you have these sort of short-lived moments where you can see into his soul and then it sort of goes back to his other type of music, which is full of febrile energy. And even at the very end of the opera, when Margaret is reconciling the two worlds, her old life in England and her new life in Australia. She's reflecting, um, addressing the moon, if you like, on her, last, on her former life. And then suddenly there's this old music interposed, which is full of this sort of nervous, Will Lord-like um, energy. And it's, it keeps a dramatic thrust going through the opera right until the end, until she finally, with concluding bars, has reconciliation. Don't take it hard, lad. Margaret's catch. Words not empty. Margaret's catch. No. 